on guys and today we'll be talking about those Indiana Pacers so like and subscribe for over 150 videos regarding every single NBA team a month six videos a day but what I want to talk about today is the fact that this is a team that has under 90 million dollars in committed salaries so basically they have like 37 million dollars in cap space to play with and I'd like to say that they can bring back a majority of the roster you know Terry Taylor, Juan Washington, O'Shea Brissett, Isaiah Jackson, Chris Duarte, Tyrese Halliburton, Goga, TJ McConnell, Miles Turner, Buddy Heald, Malcolm Brogdon, but that's obviously not what they're going to do. Is it crazy that they're still paying Monte Ellis this year? Okay, I would like them to bring back Jalen Smith, that'd be cool, but look, the Pacers entered this year with playoff aspirations, especially that they brought in Rick Carlisle after the failure of Nick Jorgen, but... At the trade deadline, they pulled the Orlando Magic, but I think they got a better haul than the Orlando Magic did for their guys. But they traded DeMontis Sabonis to Sacramento in a six-player deal for potential franchise cornerstone Tyrese Halliburton. And this is a move that a team, you know, usually does. Look, the Pacers have done this before. When they traded Paul George, they got Victor Oladipo. The Pacers prefer to acquire a promising young player that, rather than far away draft picks and the hopes of accelerating their return to the postseason, which makes smart. And with the top 10 pick in hand, where right now the Pacers, I have them at fifth. So Rockets first, Magic second, Pistons third, Thunder fourth. And with the fifth pick, I have them taking Jaden Ivey, keep it in house, okay? Imagine a backcourt of Tyrese Halliburton and Jaden Ivey. We know that Alburn is obviously part of that future, and so is Chris Duarte and Isaiah Jackson aren't going anywhere soon. And Miles Turner was viewed as one of the most tradable players at one point early in this past season. But with Sabonis gone, Turner has said he wants more of a scoring role and he wants to be like a bigger part of the offense. While Malcolm Brogdon is, in theory, under contract for three more seasons and he could theoretically fit next to Halliburton, there's been some speculation that Brogdon is going to be dealt, especially if the Pacers want to clear some long-term money. And he wasn't trade eligible during the season because he signed an extension, but he will be in the summer. So it looks like Indiana was was going to move him. And the same thing goes for Buddy Heald. He has two years, $40 million left. And it's a little more team-friendly than it was a few months ago, that deal. And Buddy Heald at 18.2 points, 44.7% from the field, and almost five assists while, you know, over here in Indiana. So Buddy Heald has some value, in my opinion. And of course, Jalen Smith played phenomenally for the Pacers after arriving in the deadline. But because his rookie salary team option was declined last year, the team can't offer a starting salary higher than about $4.7 million, which may not be enough to bring him back. Okay. And don't expect Ricky Rubio, TJ Warren to come back. I don't expect it. But people have been saying that Lance Stevenson might take the vet men and just be like a basically on the roster because he seems like. People just really like him on the team. So look, when you look at this, the salary cap situation is it's going to be like about 125 million, 122 to 125. It hasn't been fully confirmed. And they have a team option on a shape set. Keep that. Dwayne Washington, Terry Taylor's salaries. Dwayne Washington's isn't guaranteed. Terry, Terry Taylor has like 600,000 guaranteed. And I don't expect them to bring back any of their two-way guys. But with the 31st pick, they could maybe snag a guy like Jaden Hardy or Keon Ellis, you know. And I think it could be really interesting. But I really do hope that they can bring back Jalen Smith. It just sucks that they can't offer him more than 4.6. So taking into account that they're probably going to bring back Brissett and a cap hold for the first-round pick, the Pacers project to have $95 million in guaranteed money, which leaves them with about... 30 million dollars 25 to 30 million dollars in flux of being able to get a guy in free agency or use that money to get multiple players and if you look at it they have a mid-level exception of 10.3 a biennial exception of 4 million a trade exception of 10.4 another trade exception of 7.3 another one of 2.3 and then another of 420,000. so it's pretty interesting when you see that because i look at this team i don't think there are too many pieces away if you trade Malcolm Brogdon, Buddy Heald, Miles Turner, and TJ McConnell, then everything I say goes through the window. And I think they are going to trade them, but if they did keep them, if they're running Malcolm Brogdon, Tyrese Halliburton, Buddy Heald, Miles Turner, and I guess maybe Chris Duarte, 
I don't know if that's something they would do. That would be the idea, and then they would bring a bunch of role players and try to be like the sixth seed, the seventh seed, which I mean they could do. Or they blow it up, send out McConnell, Turner, Heal, Brogdon, okay, get as many picks possible or try to get as many young players as possible and run out Goga, Tyrese, Chris Duarte, Isaiah Jackson, okay, Ter Terry Taylor, O'Shea Brissett, Dwayne Washington, Terry Taylor, draft Jaden Ivey, throw out Jaden Ivey and, you know, my man, over here, Tyrese Halliburton. And you could, you know, there's going to be some guys available at the end of the draft. You know, Jaden Hardy, Jalen Williams, Marjan Bojamp, Bojamp. God damn. So I want to hear your thoughts down below if you guys are on the same page as me. Or is this just me who's thinking this? I think it's definitely possible. Very much possible. Is it likely? I don't 100% think so, but hey, there's crazier things that happen. So I hope you guys do have a good one. Till next time, guys. Put peace out.